flow. For this problem, we have a chair uh, with someone sitting in it. Uh, so this is our chair. We've got front legs at A, back legs at B. Uh, and the two forces, the 180-pound force and the 15-pound force acting on it as follows. Uh, so we're assuming there's no friction at A. It's a smooth surface and it's a rough surface at B. So all the friction is going to ex exist back there. Uh, and I want to determine all of the forces acting at points A and point B for this particular chair. Um, so if I draw out my free body diagram, so let's draw the chair again. I have a shape like this, cross beam, the back. All right, so at A, I'm going to have uh, no friction, just a normal force. I'm going to call this one F. And A, I'm going to have a normal force back here at B, F and B. Uh, and I have a friction force, or a potential friction force, F, F, B at the back here. All right, so I also have kind of this force on the seat of 180 pounds and a force on the back of the chair uh, for 15 pounds. All right, so before I start labeling dimensions, I'm actually going to uh, start writing out my equation. So this is my free body diagram. I want to know the sum of forces in the x, sum of forces in the y, and then the sum of moments, and we'll pick a point for that. So in the x direction, I'm going to have 15 uh, and then minus FFB equals zero. In the y direction, I'm going to have F and A plus F and B uh, minus 180 equals zero. And for the sum of the moments, I want to pick a point that's going to uh, give me kind of a limited number of unknowns. And so back here at point B, I've got the normal force and the friction force acting at that point. Uh, so I'm going to take the moment about point B uh, as my moment equation. All right, so now I need to determine the kind of perpendicular distance of everything from point B, uh, which is going to be, <clears throat> uh, it's 18 inches this way from A to B. Um, this 180-pound force, if I go uh, kind of perpendicular distance here, uh, if it's 12 inches back from the front and it's a total of 18 inches, that means it's 6 inches from the back of the chair. Uh, and the last one is the height of this force here. So 18 plus 18, uh, the total height is 36 inches. And those are my distances, my perpendicular distances from all of those forces to point B. All right, so the moment of the normal force A, um, that is going to be uh, negative. Uh, it's going to cause a clockwise rotation. Um, and it'd be F and A times 18. And then this 180 pound force that would cause a counterclockwise rotation that's going to be positive. Um, so plus 180 times 6. And then last but not least, I've got this 15-pound force up here, 36 inches away. Uh, that would cause a clockwise rotation that's going to be negative. So minus 15 times 36. And that whole uh, equation is equal to 0. <coughs> All right, so from this point, we can start solving our equations. Um, and this bottom equation down here, I can figure out FNA. So I know if I rearrange that, um, F and A is going to be equal to negative 15 times 36 plus 180 times 6 
all over 18. And so FNA is going to be equal to 30 pounds. All right, so that is the force at the front leg of my chair. All right, next one is going to be uh, FFB. We look at the sum of forces in the, or sorry, sum of forces in the x equation, um, and that one's very simple. It's just FFB is going to be equal to 15 pounds. All right, and finally, I'm going to look at, for FNB, the normal force at B, um, and FNB uh, is going to be equal to uh, 180 minus FNA. Uh, FNA is 30 pounds, so FNB is going to be uh, the remaining 150 pounds. And so with that, I've solved for my three unknown forces. This is the uh, normal force at point A and point B, as well as the friction force at the back leg there. Uh, so with that, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again.